There we go. I finally got it to work. All right. So hello, everybody. Welcome to a live post here at Emily's Vintage Visions. Um, talk today a little bit about some vintage footwear um, options that are both original vintage as well as some newer options that are available on the market. Um, this was supposed to have been done about an hour ago, but I had some problems setting things up, um, trying to find a good spot in the house to uh, lay things out, lighting. Um, we're in the midst of quite the winter storm right now. Um, it's actually rather pretty outside. I don't know how well you can see out there, but uh, it is coming down like crazy. So it's a good day to be inside where it's warm. So um, I thought that I would start here by showing you um, some, just some photos of uh, vintage shoes. Um, I tell people whenever they're doing research, whenever you're looking um, for different options, either for um, for everyday vintage wear, if you want to be really authentic, or for living mm -hmm. history purposes, um, that as much as possible, try to go to original sources. Um, and this is true no matter what time period um, you're looking at from 18th century through um, 1940s, 1950s. Um, obviously, it's a little it's a little easier to find resources. Uh, from 20s, 30s, 40s than it is to find original source material that's much older. Um, but I've got a couple different books. I know these are going to be backwards, and I apologize. I'm not sure how to fix that. Hi! <laughs> Look, I got it to work! So, um, these types of books are really good because they show um, period advertisements. So this one is 1920s, and again, I apologize, it's backwards. Um, this shows a couple of different options of winter and cold weather footwear. Um, some of these are like a, like a galoshe style overshoe. Um, some of these are quilted. I don't know if you can see that there. Um, kind of cool. These ones up top almost look like they're, um, like a fabric or like a wool, a wool style. And they got like a little zipper up front. So that's 1920s. Um, a couple of different books here. This is Montgomery Wards. This is another um, reproduction. Um, it's it's vintage uh, advertisements for all kinds of different clothing. Um, but to show you the shoe options, um, and I apologize. I have two cats that are wandering around, and one of them is now deciding that she wants to join the video, so um, she's going to be knocking things over. <laughs> That's Rita. Anyway, so here we go. A couple of different um, shoe options for both men and women's shoes. Um, what's really great is that um, some of these styles you can still find reproductions of. Um, there's a few companies that make them. Um, I think it's Red Wing makes the men's style of boot here, this tall style. Um, oops, and she's going to want to get into stuff. Rita, sweetie, you can't do that. Um, another book here. This one didn't have as many shoe options in it, um, but just to show you really quick. Um, this is just another really handy resources. This this book is one that um, you can find these on Amazon, you can find them um, on eBay, and honestly, they only go for like a few dollars a piece. So when you're just starting out doing research, um, books like this are really, really handy to have um, because they are showing you original content um, from the time. So, oh. This other, one more photo. I actually found this when I was going through looking for um, some information to post on uh, World War II waves. So I don't know how well you can see this, but this is a winter photo, and the lady right here has on a pair of what looked like um, fur lined or at least fur trimmed overshoes. And I know that's really blurry and hard to see. I apologize, but um, the the tops of them have fur and they have a zipper front. Um, and that's a style that I've seen from 1920s through even into the 1950s, 1960s. Um, so when you're looking for vintage footwear, 
um, you'll find that some styles are going to work for a number of different time periods. Um, so that's really great. It opens up some more opportunities um, for footwear. Overshoe, I'm going to get to that in just a second. So this type of overshoe or galoshes, it's kind of like this. So these are the boots that I posted a couple of pictures of on Instagram and you guys all went nuts over them. Um, they they are an overshoe, which means that they literally go on over another pair of your shoes. The, the heels, um, they're hollow. The whole, the whole shoe um, is hollow, if that makes sense. Um, these ones are trimmed in, I think, a rabbit fur, and they've got a little tie up front here. Um, this particular pair is made out of some kind of like a, um, a fabric with a metallic weave in it. Um, and then the soles are rubber. Oh, it's great. These actually came with the original tag still attached to the bottom there, which is pretty cool. Um, so this pair of shoes, hi Rita. Excuse me, you're in the way. <laughs> you're in the way, kitty. Are one option as well as this style of overshoe um, or uh, shoe rubbers is sometimes what they're called. So as you can see, this is all, all rubber, totally flexible, moldable. Uh, the heel, it's kind of squishy there. So these are designed to go on over a type of uh, heeled pump like this. Um, and this style actually fits this pair of shoes. So one of the things that I've learned when you're shopping for um, the galoshes or overshoes is that they are marked um, with corresponding shoe sizes. So I normally wear um, like a six, six and a half size shoe, which is what this is. And these are marked seven. Um, you want them to fit snugly over the shoe, but you don't want them to be so tight um, that you're going to risk tearing the material. That's one thing you do have to be careful with if you are um, planning on wearing um, any any type of original shoe um, is that the things will get um, they do have uh, certain like stress areas you can see this is starting to kind of wear here um, and a little bit on the back part of the heel um, so I actually don't wear this pair of overshoes anymore I've worn them out a couple of times um, they're in beautiful condition other than the little bit of um, crackling that's starting to happen so and I think that there's actually a little, little tiny tear there. Um, so I just use this particular pair for display. Um, but things do get brittle with age. Plastic does tend to break down um, over time. Um, let's see. I had another pair, I thought, of rubber overshoes. Oh, here they are. Um, so these are, these are like 1930s, 1940s. Um, this overshoe is 1940s. Um, you can tell by the shape of the heel, the shape of the toe. And then this style actually came from um, my friend's mother. They belonged to her. Um, I think she said she wore them in like the 1950s, 1960s. So you can see that the heel shape is a little different. Um, heels tended to get a little bit narrower into the 50s. Um, and she had very, very narrow feet to begin with. Um, and these actually don't fit over any of the shoes that I own. Um, but these are pretty cool. They, uh, they go on over and they've got this cool little button tab. So they basically just wrap around the front of your shoe, keep everything dry. These are um, some kind of like a, a, they're not quite rubber, it's, it's almost like a, a plastic type material. Um, and these do not have a maker's mark. They say made in the USA, but they don't have a um, any kind of a brand on them. Um, these didn't either, unfortunately. Um, but you can see the difference in the heels there. So 40s versus 50s, 60s style. Um, another type of overshoe or galoshes are these cool things. So I actually picked up 
two sets of these with their original boxes um, at the Brimfield Antique Fair, um, which is really cool if you ever have a chance to go. Uh, Brimfield, Massachusetts, it's about, I think, I think they do it three times a year, um, in the spring, summer, and then in the fall, and it's literally hundreds and hundreds of vendors. Um, lots of really cool stuff. So I picked up two sets. Um, these are marked a size 8, which I knew were going to be too big for me, but I figured I could, you know, hand these off to somebody else. And then the other set that I got, I thought were a size 6. Turns out they're size 9, so these are also too big for me. Um, so at some point I'll be listing both pairs for sale um, once I get around to taking some pictures. Uh, but these go on. They're going to slide on over um, just the toe of the shoe. Let's see if I can do this here. There we go. Okay. So they're going to go on over the toe, and then they have this sling that just goes up around the back of the heel, like that. So these are only going to protect the front part of your shoe. Um, so if you're able to find a pair like this, I don't recommend wearing them um, with shoes that have a heel that's either suede covered or um, uh, any, anything other than like a hard uh, wood like this or a leather heel. Because um, the whole idea of covering the shoe is you want to keep it protected. Um, but these are just a cool, cool little, little thing to have. Um, and like I said, the, the full-size set, I, I had worn them a couple of times, and they worked really great. Um, they're just starting to get brittle now. Um, I would be very careful about wearing any type of vintage footwear um, during weather that's, if it's going to be really, really wet, um, really slushy, um, or if you're in an area that there's going to be a lot of salt on the sidewalks or on the roadways, because the salt is going to be very, very damaging, um, especially to... Um, the older materials. So, um, let's see, I had a couple pairs. Oh, the, um, so for men's options, um, you're all pretty familiar with like a standard Oxford shoe um, that, that's kind of common throughout the 20s, 30s, 40s. Um, leather shoes are, are nice for um, wet weather as long as you've taken precautions to um, use a, a like a waterproofing um, substance on them. This is actually an original pair of boots that are probably 20s into the early 1930s. Um, you can see though, obviously, these I would not want to be worn outside because they are pretty, pretty worn out. Hi, Corey. Do you want to come up and talk about men's boots? These are actually Corey's boots. <laughs> so that's an original pair there which are very similar to the lady style of tall boot. Um, I believe Red Wing is still making boots like this, so that is an option um, if you want a nice leather boot for um, colder weather, wet weather. Um, another cool option. Oh, of course, putting his makeup on, but he's going to come and join us. <laughs> um, so for reproduction wear, these are the rosy boots from uh, Royal Vintage Shoes. And I've been actually wearing these a lot lately. Um, I do need to put a coat of uh, leather conditioner on them and waterproofing. Um, what's the, is it mink oil that we use? Mink oil. Mink oil. Um, which, uh, mink oil is a conditioner and it's a waterproofer, correct? Yes. Okay. My husband, Corey, is joining us. <laughs> Oh, okay. He will join us shortly. Um, so, uh, like I said, for, for wet weather reproduction option, um, these are really good. I would recommend wearing them with wool socks if you're going to be wearing them outside. Um, the wintertime just gives you a little bit of extra, um, extra warmth um, inside. And just as a quick, quick comparison, because I happen to have them handy, um, these are men's buckle boots. These are reproduction. And I'm going to have Corey talk a little bit more about the men's styles, but I just wanted to show you a quick side-by-side -side of the different shoes. Um, all right. You ready to talk about shoes? Yeah. Okay. So Corey is actually going to be joining us, my husband. 
um, I'm going to slide back a little bit so we can both get into the video here. Bear with me a second. So okay. for men's boots, these are actually a really nice kind of general working class boot. It's a higher boot than a regular shoe. Um, these are called rough outs. They're army rough outs. Um, these are kind of just a mass produced boot. They actually work really well for like just a working farm type of impression. I've also got your um, too. Oh, yeah. These are really great. These are Stacy Adams. Stacy Adams, um, there we go. They're, a, they're like a high top boot, but they're a capped boot. You can um, bring it up to the camera too, they can see a little better. They have that, that cap over the front, and then they are a higher boot. They're less of a shoe. Um, I use these for an early U.S. Navy impression. Um, they were just called an ankle boot or an ankle shoe. Uh, I use these for just about everything. Um, they're kind of falling apart now, but... Johnny says hi. Hi, Johnny. <laughs> um, the, neat, the neat thing about these boots are that the U.S. Army used them with a, a gator. It was a canvas gator. And one of the things that the U.S. soldiers were saying from the field was, the gators are great, they keep everything out of your pants and out of your boots, but they're a, they're a pain to put on and take off. And it actually, in the, the uh, Pacific, the Marines that were wearing them were actually finding that because it was such a pain to put them on and take them off, they were getting um, a lot more cases because it was so wet, a lot more cases of trench foot or just injuries to the feet because the guys didn't want to put them on or take them off. It was just too much of a pain. So one of the, re one of the results of that was the buckle boots, which are kind of a, an in-between of just a regular low boot and then some type of gaiter up top, which is a buckled gaiter, which the women's boots are based off of these. So they're basically the same kind of boot. Um, and these, these are the 19, or well, M M43 boots. Mm -hmm. um, came out in 1943. These were a great boot. Everybody loved them. Um, and actually the paratroopers started giving up their classic parachute, their paratrooper boots, which are... Uh, did I? Oh, I did grab both. They were known for. Um, do you want to talk, uh, you do the history of these really quick, but um, just options of what you wear for shoes when we do vintage stuff yes. for, specifically for like colder weather and wet weather? Um, for the colder weather boots, I prefer the buckle boots. Um, and I, these, you, you can get... Um, a reproduction men's boots so if you you don't have to use them just for military if you're looking for yeah. um, options um, for just for everyday use um, you mentioned paratrooper boots um, there's one brand that are called Corcoran is that right these. so these are an original pair of uh, paratrooper jump boots but the company Corcoran makes them as well and you actually have a pair for modern wear that you wear for work. I wear for work I wear a uh... A, they're a modern jump boot, but they're almost identical other than color and the way the the uh, lacing is done. Mm -hmm. But other than that, these are exactly what I wear for work. Um, I, have, is, I have a summer pair and I have a winter pair. Which is very cool. Um, so Corcoran, you can go online, you can look those up. Um, really nice option for, uh, for vintage wear, but also um, for just kind of general daily wear as well. Yeah. Um, the difference between these two, these are these are my reproduction jump boots. These are Corcoran. They are made by Corcoran. Um, these are actually really really comfortable. Uh, I wear them. I wear these specific boots all the time just for fun. Um, they're very comfy. They have uh, pretty good support for the, the ankles, obviously. Um, and one of the reasons that Corcoran was so well loved is they have this big bulbous end. Big fat um, toes. Big fat toes. <laughs> and the idea was that it was a it was a boot for guys who were going to be on their feet. And what happens, you know, biologically with your feet when you're on them all day is that your the front of your feet actually swell. And they did enough studies that when they found out that the, the men's boots, their feet swell, they designed this toe cap, which is big, bulbous, and actually gives you a lot more room than you'd ever think you'd need. But it allowed, allowed the feet to swell up without constricting them. Mm -hmm. Um, another feature that I always think is interesting is 
Let me just hold oh. up the other ones. Is this the original? Yeah. So, here, I'll just oh. flip it. Um, the heels on these, these are not Corcoran's. These are the original ones. They are jump boots, but they have a square heel. One of the reasons that Corcoran's were loved too is that they made these odd cut for the heel, kind of, you know, it's an angled heel. But the reason they said it worked was that when you were jumping yeah. out of the plane, a square heel had the tendency to catch on things as opposed to a ramped heel um, that would kind of slide off. So when you're jumping out of the plane, you didn't want to catch on anything that could off balance you and possibly injure you either on the way down or way out or just get you in a bad position to jump out of the airplane. So Corcoran had this this little ramp cut into their heels. Um, not all boots have them. Not all jump boots. Are your modern black boots done the same way? Yep. They have the same oh, okay. the same that's heel a, cut. That's a cool little feature. Um, but Corcoran makes these. You can find them, find them online. They're actually relatively inexpensive. They're about 150-ish, 130. It's not too bad. Um, ironically enough, I paid much less for my originals. So, so the your um the Stacy Adams, do they make winter shoes for men as well? Or is it more um I know this is this is like the ankle style, but do they do um like an Oxford or any other type? They do of... an Oxford. Okay. Um they have a lot of different designs. This is the closest one to a nineteen thirties, forties. These are actually um really similar to um should you hold that real quick. Uh, the ones that I found in the 1920s catalog, um, they've got more of the squared toe. Of course, now I can't find the page. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Oh, those are those are women. But you can see that they've got kind of that that squared off toe, the toe cap. Um, so that's a good option if you're looking for men's shoes, 1920s, 1930s. Um, reproduction. Um, can you think of any other companies other than Corcoran um, or Stacey Adams that does uh, menswear, men's footwear? Because I know that's one thing that to find um, men's men's vintage anything, it's, it seems to be harder to find. SM um, Wholesale is one. Okay. They do um, they do boots. Uh, World War II Impressions does sell, and at the front, both sell um, military boots. Um, and it's not uncommon to see military style boots, especially after World War II. I was going to say for post-war. So if you're, if you're looking at doing, um, uh, a men's impression that's post, post-World War II, um, any sort of like workwear, especially, um, mm -hmm. military surplus, um, is, is a good way to go, um, for, for footwear as well as for clothing. And also, as always, looking at antique, antique stores, um, vintage clothing places. Yes. That's actually one of the things I want to talk about. So, um, so this particular pair of shoes that I post the overshoes, um, these I think I found. Corey's gonna leave now. Thank you. <laughs> um, so where where to find them other than shopping online? Um, eBay, Etsy. Um, this particular pair of overshoes I got on eBay a few years back. Um, you can also find, um, I've seen a couple pairs of these on eBay. I've seen a couple pairs on Etsy. Um, I actually, just before I started the live cast, um, I did a quick search on eBay and Etsy just to see what was out there. And I used the search terms um, vintage overshoes, vintage galoshes. Um, I threw a couple of dates in there just to kind of vary the search. Um, so if, if you have a seller that is listing things correctly, you should be able to find it um, just by searching, you know, with those simple terms. Otherwise, you may have to dig a little bit. Um, I think I had around 130 hits on eBay just by putting in vintage galoshes. Um, of course, not all of those items that came up were actually shoes. Um, there was some really random stuff as well. But um, definitely check out um, online um, shops like Etsy, like eBay. Um, antique stores, I actually got um, this pair of, of overshoes um, at one of my favorite shops in Vermont called Who is Sylvia. Um, she's located in Woodstock, Vermont. Um, and so these, um, this pair that I got there, um, 
Like I said, this, this particular pair, um, there's actually a couple of these listed right now on eBay and on Etsy. Um, and I've actually seen some, they're, they're not true reproductions, but they're sort of that vintage style um, by looking on places like Amazon. Um, it, it's, what you're going to find is going to depend on how much you're willing to spend, um, what kind of quality you're looking at, and um, if, if you really want something that is, is going to be for just occasional wear versus really heavy duty wear. Um, some of the men's overshoes in, in the similar style or with the buttons up the front, um, I've actually seen listed at places like Tractor Supply Store. Um, you can check out Army Surplus. So there, there are a lot of options out there for finding vintage footwear, um, specifically things that are going to work for colder or wet weather. Um, I know a lot of people are getting ready for um, the World War II event that's in um, Pennsylvania, the, the Gap event. Um, and everyone is always asking, especially the women, what do I do for footwear? Where do I find footwear that's going to be warm, that's going to be comfortable for wet weather? Um, so seriously, check out Tractor Supply Store. Check out Amazon.com. Um, and honestly, when it comes down to keeping your feet warm and dry um, when you're at a reenactment, a lot of people are going to be very understanding if you don't have something that's 100% period correct. Um, and then again, if you're looking for something that's just for daily wear, um, maybe being super authentic um, to one time period or another isn't going to be the most important thing. Um, so I, I would say that if you're looking for um, true vintage footwear, it's it's going to be more challenging um, because for one thing, you're if you're assuming you're looking for it to wear, um, finding stuff that is in your size, but also finding things that are in um, a good enough condition to actually be worn and to hold up to um, being worn outside in the wet, in the cold. Um, in um, uh, We talked about the salt earlier, mm -hmm. that, that stuff is going to be very damaging. Um, so you may want to look at a less expensive pair of, of overshoes on, say, Amazon, for example, and spend maybe 15, 20 bucks versus, um, I think I, I paid around $30 for this pair. Um, Prices are going to range um, for vintage. Um, I've seen these little guys go for as little as $25. I've seen them listed on, on Etsy for like $65. So again, condition is going to be key. Is it your size? How badly do you want an item? Um, but I would say that if, you, if you're looking for something that you really, really want to wear all the time, um, go with reproduction. Um, like I said, the, the rosy boots, I've been wearing these a lot this winter, and so far these have really held up well and I've been really happy with them. Um, and I'll post a link to, uh, to this particular pair and some of the other sites that I, um, that I mentioned and that Corey mentioned earlier. Uh, you like my polka dot pants, Jill? Thank you. <laughs> I'm still wearing my fuzzy pants because I had a snow day today and I worked from home, so really there was no point in getting completely dressed today. So, um, yeah, I, I think that that's just about it. Um, I hope that this video was helpful to some of you guys. Um, I know it was kind of long, kind of rambling, um, but hopefully it was helpful. It was kind of fun, and I'm glad that Corey was able to join us for a little bit and give us some insight on um, men's footwear. So, um... This video should stay up live, or no, sorry, the video will stay up on my Facebook page, but it won't be live, um, but you will be able to um, leave comments, and I'll, I'll scroll back through here, because I see there's a bunch of people that have said stuff, um, and I will reply to comments. Um, can I do a video like this? Yes, I can do a video like this for clothes. Um, that's actually one of the things I want to do, is to try to do... Um, more videos either live or uh, pre-recorded so if you guys have suggestions um, for things that you want to know more about um, women's clothing men's clothing where to find stuff then definitely let me know um, and hopefully I can be a little bit more organized going forward um, like I said today was just kind of a, a strange day getting getting things organized and trying to find a place that I have enough light um, in our house to set up and do video um, so yeah, I guess that's it. And thank you all for tuning in.